Hello everyone, welcome back. We are out on the streets again today, Lima, Peru. And today we're doing our one of our final videos from here in Lima. Because actually, we're gonna be very soon leaving, leaving Lima, Peru. We're gonna be leaving the city of Lima. We're gonna be leaving the country of Peru. And so before I do that, I wanna do like I always do and give you a tour of the neighborhood where we've been staying. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So the neighborhood where we've been staying for this whole time that we've been here in Lima, Peru, is a neighborhood called Lince. There's a, it's one of the districts, the 43 districts, Lima, Lince, and We've been staying on the, uh, the east side of the district. And I'll, I won't keep you in suspense about this neighborhood. Um, I actually quite liked this neighborhood. I enjoyed staying here quite a bit. And um, for a lot of the same reasons that I've liked previous neighborhoods where we've stayed, right? It's a very walkable neighborhood. It's public transportation accessible. It is very um, densely packed with uh, restaurants, with shops and markets and things like that. And it also is like uh, lively enough, you know, there's definitely a, it's definitely not a boring neighborhood, but it's also not a, uh, a very touristy neighborhood. And I would say it's quite affordable neighborhood. It's not like a super, super expensive neighborhood either. And location wise, I think it's a very, very good location for a neighborhood because it's located right along um, two major throughways through the city. The, uh, the highway where the Met Metropolitano, the bus rapid transit service runs. And also in front of us, a couple blocks up, you can see Avenida Arequipa, which is like a main avenue that runs north-south through the city. And if you get on Avenida Arequipa or on the bus rapid transit service that runs along the freeway, and you head south, you go all the way down to uh, Miraflores, where we uh, where we did the first first video actually for this for this uh, stop in Peru here. And if you go north on either of those, you'll end up all the way up in uh, like the Centro Historico where we did our second video. So all the things that you want to see like as a tourist, all the things that you want to see as a tourist, like the main tourist things you have access to from this neighborhood, but it's not like, it's not a touristy, touristy neighborhood. So it's not like um, you're surrounded by tourists the entire time, which I think is really nice. If you've seen any of the previous neighborhood videos that I've done from the other neighborhoods we've stayed in, in the different cities, you'll know that this is kind of the, like the, it's, it's a kind of neighborhood that I really enjoy staying in. And I definitely enjoyed this one. So there are a lot of restaurants. That's one of the main things about this neighborhood that really like surprised me. Um, It didn't so much surprise me, like I knew from looking at the map that there were gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of restaurants in this neighborhood. Let's go this way, actually. You can hear the sounds, the symphony of Lima traffic, which uh, you definitely won't be able to get away from in this neighborhood because it does have some main avenues. Avenida Arequipa one block up here and Avenida Petit Trois, which is right here that we're about to cross. Um, but that's okay. Like, honestly, it's a big city. You know, 10, 11, 12 million people, something like that. So there's really not too many neighborhoods where you're going to be able to get away from the sounds of uh, Lima traffic, especially because Lima traffic is so notoriously hectic and loud. Um, but that's all right. The thing that I do like about this neighborhood compared to some of the other neighborhoods that we visited in some videos is... Uh, it is like it has a lot of um, you know uh, restaurants like densely packed with restaurants markets 
um, shops and things like that. Uh, but it's also like there are also things to uh, see and do like within just a few metro stops away and getting to either the bus rapid transit metropolitano or to to like the bus lines that run up here along avenida araquipa uh it's only a few blocks you walk a few blocks and you're there to the metropolitano in the other direction it's a little more than a few blocks it's maybe like six blocks i think from the apartment where we were staying and uh that's not bad though that's not bad it's about i don't know like a 10 minute walk we would take a 10 minute walk in the morning get on the bus rapid trends on the metropolitano and head off to uh whatever it was that we wanted to see and if you look right here you recognize something from a past video that we did about uh, food in lima and that's the uh, siete sopas restaurant right here the fame uh like pretty uh pretty popular um peruvian restaurant chain right there siete sopas and actually because i mentioned that i like this neighborhood because of uh uh, the restaurants that, that are in this neighborhood. I will point out pretty much all the restaurants that we went to in our uh, videos on food in Lima, uh, they were right here in this neighborhood. We didn't have to go too far at all. So um, you definitely are going to be able to find delicious food. And when I say that restaurants are like highly concentrated in this neighborhood, I mean, I, they really are. Like within maybe a two block radius of the apartment itself, I would say there's probably about 50 restaurants, um, like just on the few blocks right around. I mean, each each block that you walk down, you'll probably see five, five, six, ten restaurants. And not only that, but just a few blocks down from the apartment, right here, across the street here, you can see the Plaza Vea, which is a big like Western style supermarket, um, like the kind you would see in the United States. More like pretty much everywhere um, now that's not to say that this neighborhood doesn't have great little markets like little mom-and-pop markets vegetable markets um, carnicerias and things like that it has a ton of those as well those things are all over this neighborhood and actually if we walk uh, back down this street here this is uh, um, uh, Heron Tomas Guido which is the street that our apartment is actually on. It's up here, about, I don't know, two blocks, two, three blocks. And if we walk along here, you'll see, you can already see them up here on the left here on the side. There's fruit markets selling fruits and vegetables. And I would say each one of these blocks from Avenida Arequipa over to where we had our apartment, there's probably two or three like vegetable and fruit markets along each one of these blocks. So definitely, if you want fresh produce, you're definitely gonna be able to get it in this neighborhood. But not just that, like right over here, you can see there's a pharmacy on this corner and a pharmacy right across the street. There's a couple of like gift type stores, phone repair shops, um, restaurants, there's a Chifa right there, a Chinese restaurant right next to the Mi Pharma. And another pharmacy right over here, Inca Pharma. And then also, what they had in this neighborhood, which I really liked, um, it was right here in the middle of the neighborhood. There's a market. It's a Mercado Lobaton. A couple of flower shops here. But this Mercado Lobaton.
So over here on the next block, another Inca Farma, another uh, Chifa, a lot more little tiendas and uh, vegetable markets. There's a bakery across the street there, Panoli. So, like, you're definitely going to be able to find everything that you want to find here in this neighborhood uh, without having to go over to the big supermarket over there. But if you do want to go over to the big supermarket, it's there. And there's a little mall attached to it, a Galleria, that uh, has some stores in there as well. So, like, you have options in this neighborhood, which is really, really good. That's always what I'm looking for in any neighborhood, is options. And this neighborhood has a ton of them. Like I mentioned, also this neighborhood, very centrally located as far as access to public transportation. If uh, you head about two blocks, take a left up here and head about two blocks up, two or three blocks, and then over another two or three blocks, that's where the uh, Metropolitano station is for the bus rapid transit. And you can get, uh, you know, like I said, back and forth very, very quickly on that too. Because the Lima traffic is so bad, especially during like rush hours, taking the bus rapid transit, because here, uh, where you get on at this station, it's actually operating on the freeway. And like to go all the way down to Miraflores and most of the way to the city center, like you'll be on the freeway the whole time. You won't have to like stop at any traffic signals or anything like that. The bus has its own dedicated lane. So, you can really get places really fast on that thing. And it's a little bit pricey, um, especially for like the cost of living uh, in Peru, which is, you know, relatively low. But it's, um, I think like three, 320, 320 soles, uh, which is like about a 90 cents or so. So per ride, not that bad, honestly, but it is a bit pricey for for Peru. That's one of the things about this neighborhood that I also really like. Um, it's quite affordable. Not just the uh, rent that we spent for our Airbnb, but also like the price of some of the places around here, the restaurants. As we're walking by, two of my actual favorite restaurants in this neighborhood, Bolleria Fogata, where uh, we actually tried the chicken in our food video. And another one that didn't make it into the food video, right across the street, is this tiny little place called Punto Ge Nacional. Or um, Punto, Punto Ge Natural. Natural. Anyway, it's a Venezuelan restaurant. And it's really, really good. I was eating at that Venezuelan restaurant, like, uh, a lot. A lot while I was here. Uh, definitely enjoyed that quite a bit. But over on the other side, like, if you went past... Um, if you went past the uh, the mall over there that has the uh, Plaza Vea um, supermarket, the big supermarket, if you went past it to the west, uh, you'd end up in sort of like behind it in sort of a residential -y kind of neighborhood where there are not really a lot of shops. But then on the other side of the district, on the west side of the district, there's another sort of commercial area. It's not as big or as densely packed as this one. This is like the main commercial area for the whole district, but it is over there. I didn't go over there all that much um, just because like I had everything I needed right here in this in this side of the neighborhood, this side of the district. Didn't really have to go over there very much, um, but I did go over there at least a couple of times. And there are, you know, restaurants, shops, things like that over there as well. So pretty much anywhere you stay in the district of Lince, you're gonna be like close enough to be able to walk to uh, all the things you're gonna need. But if you come here and you decide to stay in this neighborhood, I would recommend actually staying over here on the east side of the neighborhood, like at least east of Avenida Arequipa. And that's just because it, you, then you're close enough, like a short walk over to the uh, Metropolitano, the bus rapid transit. Uh, I really, really, like, because the public transportation in Lima is, like, not great, it's a system that is in the process of being constructed, 
there are plans for it to eventually be built out to be a, uh, a very good system, like a very comprehensive system with wide coverage. It's not there yet. Uh, we have a whole video about that that you can check out. Put the link in the description, of, you know, as always. But um, if you come here before it's all completed, uh, well, the bus rapid transit is kind of, you know, like your best option over in this part of the city to, uh, to get places cheaply and quickly and effectively. So, like I said, if you're going to be staying in this neighborhood, I'd, I'd recommend staying, like, on this side of the district, on the east side, so you can be close to the bus rapid transit stations. So anyway, we head up here. We're about, I don't know, three or four blocks north of uh, where the apartment was. And at the end of this block here, there's uh, actually a nice little park, a uh, little plaza. And in some of the other neighborhoods where we stayed, we were really close to plazas. When we stayed in Mendoza in Argentina, and uh, when we stayed in, uh, where else, Mendoza, when we stayed in, um, in Cordoba, in Argentina, we're really close to uh, like a plaza, like right on the plaza, basically. And that was really nice. Uh, but this one's not too far away. So if you do want to like just go relax, sit in the plaza, I mean like in the hottest part of the day, uh, it's definitely very close, about four blocks away. You can go up here, just sort of hang out in the plaza. There's a lot of trees for shade. And this, uh, this avenue that we're coming up to here, Avenida Juan Pardo de Zela. Uh, this is like the main uh, east-west avenue cutting through the neighborhood. And it's also the avenue that uh, the bus rapid transit station is on. If you go, uh, you were to take a right here, Try not to get run over. Definitely have to be really careful trying not to get run over in Lima because, man, people drive like crazy here. That's for sure. But anyway, we're here at the plaza. If you head over this way to the east, go down that way about five blocks. That's where the uh, bus rapid transit is. I'm not going to walk all the way over there because uh, over by that end of the neighborhood, when you get over to close, closer to the freeway, like, uh, I don't know, there's just a lot more traffic. It's loud. It's a lot dirtier. I don't want to show off that part of the neighborhood. That's the part of the neighborhood that uh, that I didn't spend too much time in. I really just sort of like went through those last couple blocks because I needed to get to uh, the bus rapid transit. But along here, you can see we're getting kind of close to uh, afternoon rush hour here. So the traffic's getting a little bit thicker uh, than it normally is. And uh, quite surprised, we haven't heard a horn in quite some time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's interesting. I think I mentioned this in the uh, in the uh, video about public transportation and about traffic here in Lima. But uh, man, the people, drivers in Lima, they they communicate with their horns. They speak a whole language. They speak Spanish outside of their cars. And in their cars, they speak with their horns. So we cut back down here. Back on one of the uh, next blocks. About, about two blocks over from the apartment. And uh, it's kind of quiet back here. Where we are, two blocks over on the apartment, where the apartment is. It's a lot busier because there is a market over there called uh, Mercado Loboton, and uh, unfortunately it's closed right now. Um, I would like to, I would have liked to have walked around in there and shown it off just a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately it's closed, and we're actually literally leaving Lima um, tomorrow morning, like very early in the morning, so I'm not going to be able to get in there, but suffice to say it's just a small market that takes up like one block, one square block, and uh, it's got some shops and stalls inside. It's nice. It's a nice addition to the neighborhood and it's like nice to give even more variety and options when you want to shop and you want to like buy vegetables or fruit or you know go to a butcher or something like that. 
to have some of them inside there as well. But because it's over there, about like two blocks uh, to the right here, um, a lot of the other shops, the little tiendas, and a lot of the restaurants too, they're all sort of um, concentrated over there, over around that market down that way about two blocks which means that the block where the apartment is uh, is quite busy. A lot, of, uh, like a lot of foot traffic, a lot of people walking around all the time. Um, and some of these blocks, even just a few blocks away from the market over here, are like a lot more quiet. Um, there's, there's not as many people, there's not as much foot traffic. The only thing you get is, you know, loud trucks and a loud barking dog and the occasional car alarm. But, uh, but loud, loud traffic and the occasional car alarm and barking dogs, that's just Lima. You're not going to go anywhere in Lima and fi not find that. So. so what else did we have in this neighborhood? Well, like I mentioned, um, all the, pretty much all the restaurants that we went to in, um, in that food video are in this neighborhood. So if you want to see like a little more detail on what some of my favorite restaurants were, in this neighborhood and one of the ones some of the ones where I got the best food or at least the food that I really liked uh, you can watch that video the links down in the description and uh, other than that I just think this neighborhood is a very um, I don't know it's kind of the perfect neighborhood for me honestly when when I was doing research it's funny when I was doing research on what neighborhood to stay in of course like Every forum you go to, every you know, Facebook group, every everything, where anybody is giving recommendations on where to stay, uh, they're always saying Miraflores. You gotta stay in Miraflores. Sometimes I would hear Barranco, just every so often. And we did videos on both of those neighborhoods. So you can see why those neighborhoods are both very popular from those videos. But what I heard about Lince was People said, Lince is this neighborhood that's like, it's not dangerous. And that's another thing I felt about this neighborhood. It's not dangerous. I've walked around here at night, didn't feel unsafe at all. Um, and so people were saying, yeah, it's not a dangerous neighborhood, but it's like, it's, it's boring. There's nothing going on there that a tourist would want to do. And the only time you're ever going to see Lince is when you're like driving through it from Miraflores, where you're going to stay, into, you know, the Centro Historico, where you're going to see all the tourist things. And when I heard the neighborhood described that way, I was just like, oh, okay, that's where I'm staying. <laughs> I'm staying in that neighborhood because, you know, like I said, that's the kind of neighborhood that, that I want to stay in, a neighborhood where there aren't a lot of tourists. That's sort of a more, that's safe, that's walkable, that is like packed with shops and restaurants and cafes and bars and stuff like that. But that's not like super, um, super like crazy nightlife neighborhood. That is sort of a, uh, a neighborhood that is mostly, mostly populated with, I guess what you would just say, like average people, right? Just, just everyday sort of things going on, everyday normal sort of things going on, a quote unquote nothing special neighborhood, which, I don't know, to me those are the best neighborhoods, honestly. I, um, I don't want to go to the neighborhoods and stay in the neighborhoods where, well I do want to go to the neighborhoods, but I don't want to stay in the neighborhoods that everybody thinks are like the, the amazing neighborhoods where you absolutely have to go and see. Because uh, I'll go and see those for sure, but uh, if I'm going to be spending, you know, like a month somewhere, I don't want it to be in that kind of a neighborhood. Anyway, we're back, sort of uh, by our apartment here, and uh, right across the street, the Tambo. Tambo is like a uh, convenience store chain in uh, in Lima. It's everywhere. It's very much like a 7-Eleven kind of a place. And uh, one block down here, right around the corner, that's where we were staying, right in the apartment. So we're almost, we're almost back there. So I think that's about it for the video. I mean, what, what more can I say about this neighborhood? There's, there's uh, everything, everything that I want. It's, it's right 
conveniently located as far as like getting public transportation. There's plenty of little markets, vegetable markets and things like this all over the place. Carniceria's and butcher shops that you can go to. If you don't want to go to those things, you can walk two blocks over and go to a big old supermarket. And uh, it's uh, not full of tourists. I'm, I feel like I'm really like the only tourist here. And I haven't really felt like that in a neighborhood since uh, we were staying in in uh, Wilde back in, uh, in Buenos Aires. When I was walking around and felt like I was really the only tourist. And that's kind of why I really like this neighborhood. It reminds me of staying in Wilde the first time we were, you know, like in a new country and in a new city. So I have good memories of that. And I'm going to have good memories of this neighborhood as well. And we're here right here, back in front of the apartment. And uh, that's going to do it for the video. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I um, want to say thank you to the neighborhood of Lince for being so friendly and welcoming. And uh, also we're going to say goodbye to, uh, to Lima and goodbye to Peru as well because we're going to be moving on to a new city and a new country. And if you want to find out where that is, you're going to have to keep watching. Thank you.